Let's start today by going back to 1962. Philip K. Dick wrote The Man in the High Castle, a story about an alternate history post-World War II where Nazi Germany and Imperial Japan won the war. Speaking at a science fiction conference in France in 1977, Philip K. Dick talked about a number of his personal theories. One theory in particular caught the attention of a lot of people. He talked about the universe being a highly advanced computer simulation. We are living in a computer programmed reality and the only clue we have to it is when some variable is changed and some alteration in our reality occurs. These alterations feel like deja vu, he says. It's a sensation that proves a variable has been changed. Back in 1977, computers were still largely science fiction. Apple released their Apple II computer that same year. For those of you who don't know, the Apple II was the first real computer designed for personal use, and it only had a fraction of the computing power that's available today. So the idea of a universe being a computer simulation seemed only to be science fiction. But is it? Could we be living in a highly complex computer simulation designed by some advanced civilization? If so, what's its purpose? Why devote so much time and effort into creating this reality? And by who? Brew some coffee, pull up a chair, and open your mind. This week on Science vs. Conspiracy, we will be discussing simulation theory over coffee. We'll be right back. Have we always been living in a simulation? What is the nature of reality? A quick Google search defines reality as the world or the state of things as they actually exist, as opposed to an ideological or notional idea of them. What actually exists? What does the term reality really mean? A team of neuroscientists from MIT has found that the human brain can process entire images that the eye sees in less than 13 milliseconds. This is the first evidence of such rapid processing speed. This speed is far faster than 100 milliseconds suggested by previous studies. The idea suggests that by the time our brain processes the light and converts it to an image, what we think of as now, now has already happened. So the question becomes, if now is not now, are we living in a constant buffer? How can we be sure about our re own reality? In 2003, Nick Bostrom, a Swedish-born philosopher at the University of Oxford, known for his work on existential risk, made a statement in a paper that argues that at least one of the following propositions is true. 1. The human species is very likely to go extinct before reaching a post-human stage. 2. Any post-human civilization is extremely unlikely to run a significant number of simulations of their evolutionary history, or variations thereof. 3. We are, almost certainly, living in a computer simulation. It follows the belief that there is significant chance that we will one day become post-humans who will run ancestor simulations is false, unless we are currently living in a simulation. The idea of the simulation theory also ties into the Fermi paradox. If you haven't listened to that episode, I'll leave a link in the show notes. Uh, but in brief, the Fermi paradox states that given the vastness of our universe, life should be abundant in the stars, yet we haven't made contact with anyone officially. So where are they? Does simulation theory prove or disprove the Fermi paradox? Has the Fermi paradox been solved then? We can look at it one of two ways. There are intelligent life forms running the simulation, which means that there is life in the universe, or we are running the simulation at some future point in time and there is no other life in the universe. If we are living in a simulation, it can't be perfect. We would see strange things from time to time, glitches, things that we can't explain. Could this be part of the Mandela effect or the idea of parallel universes? 
If reality is a simulation, you could assume that there might be areas of the simulation that are doorways or portals to other points in the simulation, or doorways to other simulations. Enter the backroom theory. Now I know the backroom channel on YouTube is fictional and it's surrounded by a whole lot of fan fiction. However, could such a place really exist? Why would someone or something do this? For this, I point to Super Mario Bros. 1, released in 1985. Nearing the end of Stage 2 of World 1, there's a point in the game if you jump in a certain area, you can get to a tube that can transport you to other worlds. This was in 1985. This is just one example of portals to other worlds within the game. There are hundreds of games with similar examples. In a Scientific America article in 2013, it suggested that the universe is made up of digital code at its foundation. So what does it mean to be in a simulation? If this is all we know, does it actually matter that we're living in a simulation? Are the concepts of heaven and hell based on escaping from the simulation? Is there a biological or physical body that corresponds to what we perceive ourselves to be inside the simulation? You know, similar to how Neo woke up in a pod after escaping the, the Matrix? Have we always been living in a simulation? Or did some event in our past wipe out humanity and an alien civilization has recreated the events leading up to the destruction point? There are three events in particular that could point to the end date of humanity and the beginning of the simulation. The first event happened in Tunguska, Russia on June 30th, 1908. Scientists are still not 100% sure what happened. What they can agree on is that there was a large explosion that flattened 830 square miles of the Siberian forest. The explosion was thought to be around 12 megatons. The bomb dropped on Hiroshima was around 15 megatons, just for a little bit of comparison. We don't know what caused the explosion. It's assumed that it was an asteroid or a comet that impacted the area. Some scientists have also suggested that it was a large natural gas explosion. Perhaps the explosion was bigger and more deadly than what was recorded in our history books. Maybe it was an extinction level event. Now we are playing out the scenario of what could have happened. The second event could have been 2012. Maybe the Mayans were right and the world did end on December 21st, 2012. And somehow a simulation was created. The world has definitely taken a turn for the worst since 2012. The other scenario that could have led to the creation of a simulation might have been Y2K. At the time, everyone was convinced that the computers would destroy the world because of the way the date was programmed into their computers. It was a design flaw to save space with the operating system. Maybe the bug with the date really did trigger a nuclear war that wiped out humanity. And now we're living in the simulation. Elon Musk has his hands in many different pots. From space exploration, to electric vehicles, to a boring company. There are a lot of people who take his word for gospel. We've seen it so many times when he tweets anything about crypto. Investors take note and react. So in 2018, when he said, if you were to assume any rate of improvement at all, games will eventually be indistinguishable from reality we are most likely living in a simulation. Astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson agrees by saying, we have a better than 50-50 odds that the simulation hypothesis is correct. He goes on to say, I wish I could summon a strong argument against it, but I can't find one. On the other hand, some scientists and philosophers have suggested that this discussion is pointless because we can either prove or disprove the theory. Therefore, it's irrelevant. We may never know the truth. Even once we leave this mortal coil, we still might not know the answer. Even if we do somehow escape the simulation, how do we know that where we escape to isn't also a simulation? And so on, and, and so, so on, on, and so, so on, on, and so on. What do you guys think? Are we living in a simulation? 
leave us a comment and let us know your thoughts. If you like the video, consider giving us a thumbs up. It really helps the channel. Before you go, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on those post notifications. That way, when we release new videos, which is every Monday, you'll be the first to know. Anyway, remember, being paranoid is smart, and we'll see you next time.